Hello there, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll learn the basic user interface of Revit. So, let's start. Now, when you start the Autodesk Revit 2022 version, you will get this interface. On the left column, you will find the option to open any existing model that you would have created or you can create a new model. Now, these two are basically the project files that you work on. Below that, you also get the option to open any family or to create a new family. Now, family is basically an element or group of elements combined as one. For example, chiller. A chiller is made up of many components. When all of them are grouped as one, it is considered as one family. In the same way, you can consider a table, a chair or an AHU, FCU. All these are families. Now below that, you also get to see some details about the recent files. So we are already there. These are the recent files that we have worked on. And in case you need any document from Autodesk, you can definitely go to this option. On the bottom left, you will get the option of what's new. So in case in your version, if there is any update, you can check all that over here. In case you need any online help, you want to discuss anything in community forum, or if you need customer support, you can go for this option. Now over here, you get the option to see recent files. So these are the models. These are the families. Models are basically the project that we work on and families are, as I've already told you, elements or group of elements combined as one. So in case you want to open any existing model that you have worked on, you can open from here or any model which is not listed here, you can open from here or if you want to create a new model, you can create from here. So let's create a new model over here. So go to new. Once you click on new, you get the option to select a template. Now template is basically set of options that you will get by default when you start any project. Let's say you want to work on a construction project. So you need to have a set of visibility, which will be different in case you want to work on an architectural model based on the work you are going to perform, there will be different visibility settings and other options for different projects. So based on that, you can select whichever template you want. So if I click this, there will be a drop down menu. And if you want to work on architectural, you can go for architectural template. That way you have the visibility of walls, doors, windows and other architectural elements. In case you want to work on any structural file, you can go with this option. If you want to work on HVAC plumbing, you can select mechanical template. Now we know if I select mechanical template, I will be having the visibility of ducts, AHUs, pipes, etc. This doesn't mean I cannot have the visibility of architectural elements. Definitely in mechanical template also, I can change the visibility setting and see any other elements from any other discipline. But by default, you will get the option of mechanical settings if I select the mechanical template. So this is what happens when you select any template. So template is a kind of file. So these are some options that you already have in case you have already created a template file of your own. So you can browse and open that from there. And when we choose this template file, we are actually not opening a template file. We are opening a project file because over here you can see the project option is ticked. So project will open and this project will have the settings as per the template selected. Now let's say we don't want to create a project. We want to create a template. Now this template, let's say I want to define in such a way that I want the visibility of architectural models and MEP models. So that way I can select this option and I can select any option from here and then click on OK. And then I can go inside the project and define the setting as per my requirement and save that file as a template file. So when I open it next time, I'll get the option to open that newly created file over here or I can browse that file from here. So that is what happens when you create a template file. In general, Revit offers you four different type of file types. One is .rvt, which is the extension for Revit project files. Then you have the .rfa file, 
which is the extension for Revit family file. So in case you have created any family and you want to save it as family, you can use the extension .rfa. Next you have .rte, which is the template file. So in case you have created any template, you can save it as RTE. And finally, we have .rft, which is the template file for any family. So if you create a template for a project, that is .rte, but if you create any template for a family, that's .rft. So these are the basic four types of files. Generally, we'll be discussing the .rbt because that is the main project that we work on. And in case you want to import any other family, so we can use any other family, which will be having the extension of .rft. All right, so let's select the mechanical template and create a new project. So I hope you can understand now this will be having the extension of .rvt. So click OK. Now, once you do that, you can see that we are getting this basic user interface. On the top, you can see this is known as application menu. So first of all, you can see this is the icon of Revit. So if you click this, you can restore, move or minimize this or you can simply close this bar. Now next we have the option of home. So if you click this, you will go back to the home screen. This is the home screen. So let's go back. This is the option to create any new file, open an existing file or save any file. This is an option that is you can see not active now but this will get activated in case you are working on any project which is activated for collaboration so as of now this is not active this is undo this is redo and in case you want to print any file you can do so from here then you get the option of dimensioning so this is the option that you can use in order to measure any distance between any two elements and in case you want to measure and annotate the elements you can select this option all right next you have the option of tagging then this is the option to add any text and with the help of this you can change any view to 3d view directly so if i click this drop down you have three options to view your file in 3d now let's check the next option this is the section view this is very useful in order to create section anywhere whether it's horizontal or vertical then you have the option of thin lines. Now in Revit, you have different visibility. Your elements will be present with a visibility of thin lines or they can also be present with the help of thick lines. So all that you can do from here. So in case I deactivate this, now you can see everything in thick lines. If it is activated, you will see everything in thin lines. Then this is the option that you use in order to close inactive views. Right now we have only one view. So let's say if I open one more view. So now we have two views. So now you will see this option will get activated and this is the active view. This is the inactive view. So if I click this, the inactive view will be closed. So you can see that disappeared. Okay. So now we have the option of switching windows. So let's say I have a lot of windows open over here. I can use this option to switch between the windows. And finally, I have this drop down menu. If I click, you can see these are the options and these are basically present over here. This is new which you can see here. This is open. This is you can see here. This is save. This is over here and so on. So these are the options present in case I don't want this option of print. You can see print is already there over here. So if I click this, now you can see print is no more active and I cannot see any icon of print over here. So let's bring it back. So you can activate or deactivate any option from here. Now if I go to the bottom part of this dialog box you can see customize quick access toolbar if i click this you will get another dialog box where the options are already present let's say i select this option of print now i can actually shift it up or down i can add a separator line which you can see this is the separator line between the print and the dimensioning element so it is present over here but it's not present over here so if you want to add separator line anywhere, you can do so with the help of this option. And if you want to remove this option, we can do this from here as well. So let me click back. Okay, so we already there. Now, after this customization option, finally, we have show below ribbon. Now, this is your ribbon. This part that you see is your ribbon. Now, all the options that we are seeing is above ribbon. If I click this. Now you can see this menu actually shifted below ribbon. 
so that is also you can do but i generally prefer this to be staying at the top so this is what we have so this is your quick access toolbar so you can quickly go to these options and apply them okay next we have the ribbon okay if i go to file you can see this option where i can see new i can create a new project family or any other type of file we can also open any existing file so if i click this i get the option to open any file which is already saved in my system and then in the same way you can save you can save as you can export this file to any other file you can export the created rvt file to cad formats or pdf or any other type whichever is applicable and you also get the option to print or close the window so this is what we get in the file tab next we have the architectural tab so these elements are basically used for architectural uses so we won't be quite often using them so we'll just quickly go through them so here we have walls doors windows columns roof ceiling floor and so on so we can use these options to create architectural elements now over here what is important to us i'll just discuss that here you get the option to create levels or grids so this is something we need to work in mep project so this is something you should keep in mind to create any level or grid we have to go to the architectural tab next we have the structure tab in the same way we can create any structural element steel elements precast systems now this is of greatest importance to us here you can see we are getting the option to modify in case you want to modify any selection let's say i select any element from the model that we already have so i can modify that with the help of this tool then we have the option to create ducts, duct placeholder. This is your duct fitting, duct accessories. This option will basically convert any duct to flex duct. And in case you want to create a new flex duct, you can do so from here. Then you can apply air terminals from here. This is something that will be useful when you are doing the fabrication part. Let's say you have a duct and you want to connect this duct with a holder that will basically hold the duct from the ceiling so we can use these options to create that then you have the pnid modeler then this is mechanical equipment in case you want to load ahu fcu chillers all that you can do from this option now if you want to create pipes you can use these options pipe pipe placeholder and if you want to draw parallel pipes two three four five and number of pipes can be drawn with the help of this option also we need to apply pipe fittings when we create pipes so this is the option that will be used to create pipe fittings pipe accessories and flex pipe then we have the option of adding plumbing fixtures or sprinklers you can also add wires for electrical work then there is cable tray conduit parallel conduits and some other options such as cable tray fittings and conduit fittings so these are used for electrical work as you can see over here then there is option further to add few more electrical elements so you have the electrical equipment any devices lighting fixture and finally if you want to place any component so there you have the option to place a component or model in place in case you want to create a body an element so you can create it from here and if you have already created you can use this option to place it on your file next you have the option of creating sets this is something that will be used when we study collaboration in detail so this is what you get inside the system tabs and in mep work 80 percent of the time you will be using these tabs you can see there's a small arrow below every tab this is showing you that you can open mechanical setting if i go to the other arrow i get the same setting but this time it's not mechanical it's fabrication if i move here again i'm getting mechanical setting so if you want to go to mechanical setting you can do so from here you can also directly use the option ms to go to mechanical settings all right and let's say there's something you want to use more oftenly so you can click over here hold and drag it to your working space so this will stay over here and once your work is done you again just move your arrow over here and then this option you get to cancel this window so click this this will go to its original position so you can actually play with the positioning of these elements all right so after system tab you have the insert tab in case you want to link any revit file or any other type of file in case you want to import any cad file you can do so from here 
and you can also load families which are not there loaded in your project. So all these we can do from the insert tab. Next is annotate tab. Now this is very obvious and clear. We can annotate, we can put the dimensions, angles or any other type of texts. Then go to the analyze. Now this is also an option that will be used quite a lot in your MEP work. These are the analysis of structural models. So if you want to do some analysis of boundary condition, loads and so on. So these are used. So in MEP we don't use them. This is also not used. In MEP, we use these options. There will be spaces created in your architectural model. So you can actually define your spaces according to your convenience for MEP model. So you can add space separator, you can tag them, you can name them, you can create zones as well. Also to create reports and schedules, these are the options. For energy calculation, these are the options. And in case you want to check whether the system you have created is correct or not or if there are any disconnect or open connections all those systems checking you can do from here and in case you want to add colors to different values of flow different value of speed or any other parameter you can create coloring with the legends from here now these are some other options used for out analysis all these will explore in more detail in our further lectures so for MEP work the system and analyze are very important. Massing will not be used in MEP work in general. Collaborate sometimes we used. So this is used when we take the information from one model into the other. So collaborate tab is used. Now this is view. This option is actually useful for all the type of Revit work whether it is architectural, structural or MEP. View will be used in all of them. So this will be option to create view templates. Now what are they? We have a separate lecture for all that. So we'll be discussing view in great detail because this is something very important. As you already know, Revit works on BIM concept and there's going to be a 3D model. Now this 3D model can have infinite number of views. So creating them as per requirement, removing them, controlling the visibility of elements in different views. All those are done with the help of view tab and that is very important and that is very detailed so that is something we'll be studying in detail in our future lectures then we have the option of managing our files or the elements that we have created so here you can see some of the object styles snaps and project information here you also get to apply materials to any elements and you can just look for these options as we continue with our course then there are some add-ins if you have used any plugins or added any other type of software with the Revit all those you can visualize over here then finally you have the modify tab now this is also a tab which is very common to all the disciplines of Revit here you see type properties you see the properties so in case you have any element you will get to see all the properties of that element so here you have the option of copying and pasting before we discuss this, let me discuss some other elements. So here you can see you have the option of cut, join and wall join. So again, these options are not generally used in MEP work, but these will be used quite oftenly. So here you can see you have the option of align, offset, mirror with the help of pick axis or if you already have axis, you can use this option. Then you can split elements, you can pin them, unpin them. All those you can do from here. If you want to move anything, you can use this option to copy, to rotate, to trim or extend elements. We use these options. All right. Now let's discuss about the clipboard option. Now what happens when you copy any element, you can do so from here. And if you want to paste that element in the same level, we use this option of copy. But let's say I've created a duct system on the ground floor. I want to copy this entire system to second floor, third floor and so on. So we cannot use this copy option. Instead, we have to use this copy option. So once you select all the elements of the ground floor and copy it to clipboard, then actually you can paste with the help of this icon to any other level. So that's the difference between these two copy options. All right. So now we have understood what do we have and what are the tabs for our relevance and importance. Let's move on to other part of the user interface. Now over here, we have the option bar. Right now it's not visible because there is nothing we have selected. So what I'll do, let's open a project. Okay, so this is the project we have. Now, if I select any element, 
Now you can see there are some options appearing over here. So this is known as options bar. I have selected a pipe so it will give me option to change the diameter or its middle elevation. If I select any other element, let's say I selected this chiller. So I don't have anything much to change. So we are not getting any option over here. Let's say I select this diffuser. Now you can see I'm getting the option to change the flow of air through it. So based on what type of element you have selected, there will be few options appearing over here. So this is known as options bar that you cannot see over here, obviously. But once you select any element, you will get these options appearing over here. So this is your options bar. All right, next we have the properties palette. So this window that you see over here, if I hold it and show, this is your properties palette. Now I'll just shift it back. And this is your project browser. So what you can actually do, you can have configuration like this, or I can hold this and shift it like this. Now you can see I'm getting a blue box. Once that is activated, I can leave the mouse button. So it will adjust itself over here. So this is known as properties palette and this is known as project browser. These two are very, very important as far as work in Revit is concerned. Any discipline you are working, every time you'll be having some information, some detail to check, alter, remove, rename from here or here. So first we'll discuss about the properties palette. Now you can see there's nothing we have selected. So it is just showing you the floor plan. But let's say if I select this pipe, then it will give you the properties of this pipe. What is the horizontal justification, vertical justification, what are the dimensions it has, what are the mechanical parameters associated with it, what is the flow, any kind of data which is relevant to identity, any phasing or any type of insulation if applied to this pipe. So whichever element you select, all the data, all the properties related to that element will be present over here. Also, if you want to see what type of pipe it is you can see from here this is your fire pipe and if i click over here i can get different options and change its material as well so this property palette is also known as type selector and it gives us the information of any element selected over here you can see this is the project browser and we get to see different disciplines over here so if i just show you first of all we have the views then we have the legends. Now legends is something that we'll be discussing later on. You also have another option of schedules, reports, sheets, families, groups, any links that we have created with this file. So if I click here, you can see there is one link in this file. So this is our MEP file and you can see these walls. They are grayed out. This means this is a linked file. So what we do, we generally create a file in architectural model and we link that architectural model with the MEP file. So this architectural model is known as linked file and that is something you can view over here. Okay, now let's discuss about views. This is very important. So we have coordination, electrical, mechanical, plumbing. This is based on what type of template we have selected when we started our project. So this is a new MEP file. So you can see we are getting mechanical and plumbing and nothing over here. So this is giving you different options of views based on the type of template selected in the beginning of the project. So if I come back to this MEP file, you can see this coordination, electrical, mechanical. If I click on any of them inside mechanical, you will find we have a view which is not named. We can name this view by the way. Now inside this view, we have 3D views and inside 3D views, we have different type of 3D views. Okay. In mechanical, we also have fire protection. So in fire protection, we have the floor plans and we have the ceiling plans. Now there will be one floor plan for every floor. So you can see for ground, first, second, third and so on. So these are the floor plans and in fire protection, there are ceiling plans as well. Now one ceiling plan for every floor. In the same way, you can see floor plans and ceilings plans for HVAC as well. In HVAC, we also have 3D views. You also get the option of elevation. This will basically show you the view from front, right, left or back. And floor plans or ceiling plans will give you visibility from top. 
so in this project browser you get different elements that you can browse while working on your project if you have created any schedules you can find them over here if you have created any report you can find them over here so when we do load calculation for heating and cooling we generate a report so that report will be present over here so all that you get in project browser and anyway when we start our actual learning you'll find the use of these elements inside project browser quite oftenly and then you will understand them more next we have the drawing window this is the drawing window where you actually see the drawing and in the drawing window if i right click you can see another dialog box this is known as context menu so in case you want to change few of the settings or any value you can do that from here as well let's say i select this duct and if i right click on this duct you can see i'm getting some option like i can hide this i can create similar type of duct and some other options so this is your context menu we get when we right click on the drawing area or by selecting any element next we have the view control bar over here this is the scale you can change if you want and these two are very important option this is known as detail level as of now you can see some of the elements okay if i change the detail level from fine to medium now you can see the way in which the elements are represented got changed now the detail is much less so that detail level you can change from here we have three options next you get the option of visual style now there are few visual styles let's say if i click on wireframe you can see that entire visibility is changed i can change this to anything by the way but uh, i generally prefer having it on shaded so just play with these options and see how the visibility changes next you can add sun path and all that and then you also get the option to reveal hidden elements let's say we have hidden any elements so if you want to bring them back you can use this option and bring them back so visibility of elements are controlled from here so this is your view control bar then you have your status bar so whatever work you're performing you can see over here now you can see if i go to the air terminals it will show you that option over here so if i go to this pipe now you can see what is the type of pipe i just want you to focus on the bottom left on the screen uh, if i move to air terminals you see there's something else so as you do any work that will be updated over here and finally we have some options over here now this is to select link whichever link you have in your file with the help of this option you can change the underlay element setting and this is used to select the pinned elements now what happens when you bring any architectural file i'll just show you now if i hover over this you can see that i'm able to select the architectural file if i click i've actually selected the linked architectural file but i won't be able to move it because i've pinned it already you see this option of pinned is grayed out this means the element is pinned if i click on this option element will be unpinned but if i click this option and make it inactive now if i hover over this element you won't find me be able to select the linked architectural file so this will help you to make the pinned element selection inactive so any element which is already pinned and you want to make it selection inactive you can do that with the help of this option and we have few other options that we'll explore as the course goes on but i just want to explain you this final element which is the background process let's say we are running a report analysis so that will take some time so here you will get the status of what is the procedure going on if there is any and finally this is your selection filter so let's say if i select everything and if i want to remove some of the elements from my selection i can use the help of this filter selection so broadly this is all about the user interface i'll just quickly summarize what we have over here we have the quick access toolbar then we have the ribbon and there are tabs associated in the ribbon then we have the options bar which is not active now then we have the properties palette this is your project browser this is the working area if i right click i get the context menu this is view control bar and this is your status bar so these are the basic user interface elements of the revit 
Hope you enjoyed the session. See you again in the next one.